and welcome to the classic Doctor Who marathon. I'm Dan. I'm Michael. And in today's episode we are looking at The Keys of Marinus. And it was written by Terry Nation, who had previously written such classic stories as the Daleks, which is really good. How many parts is this one? This one is six parts. Oh, not again. It's good though. I know. Okay. This one definitely doesn't um, feel... Well, this one's a different format. Terry Nation, this, I think this is the first of, say, I think three major attempts Terry Nation has at really embellishing the serialised format of the show. Well, like having an overall arc, but separate stories. Yes. So it was this, The Chase and Dalek's Master Plan, all sort of follow that format. How many of them are Dalek stories? The last two. How so, many parts are they? Uh, Chase is six parts, Dalek's Master Plan is twelve parts. I'm going to cry when you get to them. So the story is, the Doctor and companions land on Marinus, where they meet a guy, I can't remember his name. Arbitone. Yes, that is his name. It is. And the planet is being start and the beginnings of an invasion by an alien race called the Vord. What did you make of the Vord? Um... The belly in it. Yeah, they were in part one. Where they were like secret allies, I felt like they were defeated way too easily. Um. Yeah. It was literally just like, oh look, a trap door. Oh look, he's dead. Uh, it wasn't a trap door. There was one. Oh, there was it. It got pushed through a wall, and then there was a trap door. Yeah. So and but then there was the last part where. I I feel like they felt too human dressing up in someone else's clothes as a disguise. I found that funny. It, it was funny, but I I felt like he was. A bit too human. Yeah, I think. Um, anyway, so then. But it the was guy, the whole thing of They get sent Nation's off plot to go and plot. collect the keys. four keys from four different locations. Not the key to time. Although this is basically a basis for the key to time story. Because I think the key to time probably does it better. But it's not a key to time story. Don't you dare say that it's a key to time story. This, this is the prototype for the key to time. Yeah. Um. So basically they have to go to four different places, each one has their own key, which when all plugged into this massive machine called Marinus, that is what the... No, that's... I, I can't remember. I thought the ship... no, machine was called Marinus. Probably, I can't remember. The keys of Marinus. Yeah, probably. And then it's it's got a lot of power, and the creatures that Dan l earlier spoke of... The Vord. The Vord, they want to collect them as well. Now, Arbitan has previously sent many people, including his daughter, he and becomes an ally later on. The first... So there's part one, which is where they meet Arbitan. Part two, where they go to a place which um, is all about like mind manipulation. Where they meet two people who become their allies. One of them is the daughter, and another one is someone who later falls in love with the daughter. And then there's the next part. Um, so that's the snow one. No. It's the tree one. Yes, it is the tree one. So That's probably the weakest one, do you think? Yes, the Nothing really one. happens. Basically, they arrive there. Barbara thinks she f she's found the key, goes through a trap door. The others go to the next place, apart from Ian, who comes, saves her, gets the next key with her. Then they go as well. Well, the Doctor's gone to another place to get um, another key, although... He never gets it. He's just searching around the final place. Yeah, then we go to the snowy place, and that's probably the best part of the episode. It's, it's the one with the most stuff. I think it's the most interesting. It. Basically, there's this person who's basically only in for it for what they can get for themselves, and he traps the daughter and Susan in a cave. And then <clears> the <throat> next two parts sort of focus on a trial of Ian, who they think has is killed murderer. someone. Yeah, and I think. And then the final one is about them. Basically, the the Vord is that what they're called again? Yeah. They've murdered Arbitan. And then they they think that they've got all four keys to Marinus via the people, but Ian gave them a false key when handing over the keys, yeah. and so then that blew up. The story could do with another part, couldn't it? Yeah, because it's sort of just like... I know you hate Terry Nation going really all out massive. But essentially in this one, it needed since more. each one has this, its own plot, the Vord basically were like, yes, we have one! No, um, we haven't. <laughs> and then it's just like a fade black. Fade black. Okay, let's let's go home now. Uh, it's a good meeting. You good meeting. You goodbye. Do, 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 I mean, this episode's certainly enjoyable. Yeah, it's enjoyable, but it should have had another the part with the board. The weakest so far, do you reckon? Um, because we both loved the Daleks and their destruction, and mostly an unearthly child. This one is our first. Mm, not really. Like part one, good. 
Part one is good. Part, part two, two is is good. Part three sucks. No, part three is just not. No, as I, I don't like part three. I feel like I feel like I came out of it and thought, is that it? It did feel like not much happened. Part four is the best part, I think. I like the part. There's a person in part three, who is who then dies, and it's meant to be a whole tragic thing of like, hang on, they're going to die, but we don't really see much of them. I've forgotten about that. Then part five is good. And part six feels like it's two parts stuffed into one. As if, like, they wanted six... As if he wanted to carry on doing six parters. Yeah, but... And I they're like, oh, do I need another part? Let's just rush it all and have I mean, a story out. like Inferno takes the time it needs. It's, it's not... It's something I like. This is what they said was done with Endgame, which I will not spoil. But, but like, it's not... They've not got a time limit. It's just... As it's long as, as it long as it to needs be. to be. That's a, like, it's like a book I was reading. Where it's like, did you set yourself uh, the targets? Like, 500 pages. No. You just kept on writing. Like, he hadn't... Until he reached the satisfying writer conclusion. writer hadn't even thought of how he was going to finish. He was just going to write on. I feel it's due to the nature of the show. I, know, I mean, all TV, anyway, are told you have to finish it in this amount of time. Because that's how TV works. It's not like a film. But it's like, you've got scheduling with in the... Like TV schedules, how how many weeks it can go on for, other episodes, which means you've got a bit more freedom in film than in TV to like tell your yeah. story, and I think this episode does suffer from that. In terms of the cast, obviously they feel obviously much more like a big unit at this point, don't they? Yeah, it was definitely it was part of Terra Nation's plan to have like its own cast for each episode like with the main cast but, and then sub characters i'm talking about episode. the main cast feel much more like a unit by this point by this point they've definitely established i think marco polo also builds on that but unfortunately that's missing marco hopefully, polo hopefully because animation like because said last week. that story is very much set over a very long period of time really seven parts i thought you meant like the actual story but also the actual Wait, story it's seven parts yeah the actual story does take place over quite a few months, I think. So And yet Barbara's still wearing the same costume in the next episode. And also the previous episode. But it's a nice jumper. Still, she's been wearing it for two months. She's it's probably a Nice to jumper. Anyway, so this story, rating out of ten. Um six? Cause it's really, I, I, bits of it are really good, but then the sort of a conclusion will be like, no, oh, okay. Seven-ish. Okay. We're really nice to the classic stuff, aren't we? Because if this story had been released in modern times, I mean, it's <clears> definitely <throat> obvious that they learnt from this with the key to time, because I think key to time, well, not every story is incredible. I've not actually seen the key to time. Like, you've, I've seen a, a cl clip You've seen Stones of Blood. And you've seen Androids of Tara. What happens in them? Some Androids in Tara, and there's another about blood and stones or something. Can't remember. It was a couple of years since I've seen them, them. but I'll show you it later, maybe. Um, Not the episode. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that was our thoughts on Keys of Mariners. Probably the weakest so far. Yeah, but that's only due to specific. Reasons. It's because like if they had one more part, then it probably would have gotten even higher. Just. I mean, part. also the stories we've done so far are very, are very good. Yeah, it's set the standard. And you're very going high. to have your first dodgy episode. And this Sadly. is and this is probably it. Well, it's not a dodgy episode. It's just not but it's, as good. It's like the what we've had so far is such high quality storytelling, and then now you get uh, like, the set design. However, I, on this I swear, episode, dodgy episodes in classic Who, they're just like okay, the episode's okay, but like, there's only a few. And classic then modern episodes Who, do modern Who dodgy episodes are just like <gasps> yeah, that's the thing. Warriors of the Deep sucks. That's all I'm saying. What? Warriors of the Deep. That's the, one of the few modern ones, classic ones, along with Time Lash. I'm like, I can't get my head around. Have you seen Time Lash? Bits of it. It's not good. It's weird. It's really weird. No, there's the anyway. thing I've stuck to is that I can't say whether something's good or bad. Like I can accept someone's opinion, like if I can take their word for it. You can like, predict as well. But I can't. Like Batman v Superman, I've been told bad film, but that's his opinion. Martha. And I. I can say it's probably a bad film. It's almost I've definitely a bad film. I've told you what happens. But I, um, I can't say for myself that it is a bad film until I've seen you it. You can. I've told you the entire film. No, you haven't. 
basically the film is, I want to kill Batman, I want to kill Superman. We've got the same mum's name! So, ain't that... And anyway, why would Superman say Martha? Why wouldn't he say Mum? Okay, this is another video entirely. See you next time on the classic Doctor Who marathon. Goodbye. Bye bye.